Hello. We're good. We're here. We'll give that a few seconds. I think there's like a 10 second delay. So, hi. Hello. Let me know if you can hear everything, if you can see everything, how everything looks and sounds. We should be good to go. I'm really excited to hang out with you all. Hi, hi, hi. This is going to be fun. I'm really excited. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is going to be great. I haven't done a, um, a limited palette video live. I've been doing lots of things to prep and get ready. So everything looks good. Everything sounds good. Fantastic. Yay. I'm really excited to do this with you all. I've been doing some prep work so that the structure overall of this can be really similar to the other limited palette videos. So we are just about ready to go. I'm really excited. I need to grab one thing. Hold on. Okay. So, normally with our limited palette videos, we start by talking about, oh, oh, binge the entire limited palette series. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed them. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm going to be using my Roman Small watercolors. These are not White Knights, even though it's in the White Knights palette. Um, yeah, these are not White Knights watercolors. Um, I will, as soon as we're done with the live and everything, I will add the list of materials to the video description. That's usually something I like to do ahead of time, but that's all right. We'll, we will, yep, we will get it done next time. Okay, so I have some, I actually already did my final sketch, and then these are just that sketch printed on watercolor paper. I scanned it and printed it. So we will do a couple couple of like color comps together so we can... I think I already know what colors I want to use, but it's good to test things out and try some different color combinations. So I have those ready to go. Um, I had... this this tiny sketch was a test for the reference we're going to be using. We'll talk about the reference we're using. And then this was my, this was more direct from the reference, and then this was the thumbnail sketch for, um, this is the thumbnail sketch for the actual painting we're going to be doing. I'm really excited. I actually did a little test with my patrons over on Patreon. We did a poll, and they voted on which of these three palettes that I was going to do for today's video. That's a little bright now. Okay, so my patrons have actually been voting on which palette we're going to use. I'll double check the results, but I'm pretty sure that hasn't changed. Let me just make sure. Yep, so we are going to be using this palette. This is palette number one and it was a close, number three was a close second, so I definitely want to use this palette in the future, maybe for the next limited palette video, and if this one works out well, maybe we'll do that one live as well, so we'll see. So, but today we're going to be working on, we're going to be working with this limited palette, and I did say on to my patrons that this one has actually been my favorite lately, so um, I'm excited to share that with you. All right, let's get started by swatching our colors and we'll do like our standard limited palette swatches with all the color variations. Okay, so we're gonna start there. Let me get set up here. Sketchbook can go away for now. All right, I do need to make an adjustment. It's really funny, I was getting my paper ready and yeah, the, it, it was a hard choice between the two palettes, yeah. So this is not Cherry Conacodone Red. I wasn't sure which red this was. I thought I, I do have that one, I think, but that's not what this is. So I need to fix this real quick. 
And I don't, is it really PR254? That seems wrong. I'll have to double check. But I just, I did just see it. Hmm. I was just looking at it over there. We're going to say for now that that's what that is. It feels wrong, because I feel like 254 should be a bit more, a bit earthier. I know I love that pigment, but okay. I'm going to zoom you in, move you over so we can have a nice view, and I will fix everything in a moment. Oh, Robin, I'm sorry you had to uh, cancel your birthday party. I hope the day was still nice for you. Happy belated birthday. Let's get this looking nice. There we go. Oh, yeah. A palette of colors I never use. With gouache and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to look. I do have like, sometimes when I customize watercolor palettes, there are colors that end up just like off on the side and don't get used. So I even have some like White Knights colors that are set off in the set or on the side. Yeah, um, palette number three actually has some, that was this one. This was the second choice. And this one is that same Pyrrol Red that we're gonna use today. And then this is, Roman Schmal's Payne's Gray. So Pyrrol Red and Payne's Gray. But, and we're going to be using the Pyrrol Red today, but not the Payne's Gray. Okay. All right. So let's start with some swatching. Um, Naples Yellow Deep has been one of my favorites for a long time. I really like this yellow. This is a fun one. So we'll get our swatches in first. I do believe that this color granulates a bit too. It's a brown pigment. And so there's that one. I'm going to keep my towel nearby so I can let me know if if um, the video is like too bright or like overexposed. I can easily adjust it. It's different like what my camera says is overexposed versus what you actually see. I usually edit that in post, but since we're live, I'll just check in with you. Next we'll do our red. I love this red. This is like my favorite red that I have. It's like super saturated and it mixes beautifully. I really like this one. Oh really? In like in the in the number one look like alizarin crimson. I know this one in number two looks very crimsony. But they are actually the same red. I think that this one's like not as saturated. Like I didn't add as much pigment. It does look a little deceptive, but these are, wow, that looks so different now. These are actually the same color. Mm-hmm, interesting. All right, so, just get lots of saturation there on that one. And then this transparent turquoise. This is a combination of phthalo blue and PG7 which is maybe phthalo green. So really, really, really beautiful turquoise. Oh, that was number two, okay, yeah. Yep, that one does look a lot like alizarin crimson. So this is what our three colors look like for today. Really excited about them. Exposure looks good, thank you. Good to know. Okay. So we've got our three colors, and now off to the side we'll do some mixing. This brush is just a calligraphy brush that I got in a Japanese art supply subscription box. It's stained, really needs to be washed. 
I wish I could tell you where it's from, but I do not know. I really like it though. All right, let's get started with our flat swatches. I'll have to grab a brush for that. I'm going to move the camera down a little bit so that you can see better. Hold on. Going down, going way down. <laughs> okay. Thank you in advance to the people who are answering questions. I appreciate the help so much. Let's get you in focus again. All right, we should be pretty good there. Aw, Jesse, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for the tip. That's so sweet. Yeah, now my face is gonna be overexposed and the camera is going to be in our face for a couple minutes while we do the swatching, but that's okay. This is where that sits. And I can, I guess I could peek at you from around the corner. Hello. <laughs> Let me grab a, a flat brush. Okay. Yeah, so now the camera is just gonna be in our face for a minute. All right, let's start with, I think we'll start with the red and the yellow. I have a Cotman, uh, Windsor & Newton Cotman flat brush that I'm gonna use for these swatches. Let me make sure I get this lined up nice so it looks good for everyone. That looks like a good spot. Ooh. It's a little nerve wracking, I have to say, to do these live. Oh, and I'll scoot this over so you can see. There we go. All right. And then we're, we're gonna slowly add a little bit more Naples Yellow to this mix. This is a color I really like. I love it when you tell me, when you guys tell me that you want to like make art while we're doing this or that my, that the things I make inspire you to want to make art, that that's like one of the greatest compliments, I think. Yeah, this is a really fun palette. There's going to be varying amounts of these colors here. feels a little dark to me so I'm going to adjust it a bit let me know if it gets too bright but that should be good no I hope I'm not making it look easy to paint straight strokes because <laughs> it's not that easy for me it helps I do have my pinky like my pinkies down on the paper so like I'm going like this so having my pinky down is helpful. Oh, now it's, that one got a little wobbly. Okay, so these tones are pretty soft. Not a ton of variation because that, um, that red is already so warm. So, there's still some nice variation in here. Okay, let's do something that's going to be really interesting to see. Now let's do, I'm going to clean this spot on my palette real quick. We're going to do the turquoise and Naples yellow this time. I love these mixes. And we'll start with Naples yellow. 
So I want that to go right there. Like that. Have I tried Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 Water Soluble Wax Pastels? I have not. Ooh, that's interesting. I will make a note to look them up. I think I've heard of them, but I've never tried them. Alright, so we're going to slowly pull this towards turquoise. And it, this is interesting because the Naples yellow is a brown pigment. It keeps it super earthy. It's really interesting. And then that phthalo blue, that or that turquoise is so not earthy <laughs> that it's it's so different. It it makes the mixes I think feel like almost a little bizarre when you mix phthalo blue with like an earthy color. When I have to say, I think I've said this before, but one of my favorite things about live streams is just like watching you all talk to each other Such a fun opportunity for people to just chat, I think. Okay, we are almost to the turquoise now. Yeah, the greens are really pretty, and especially in this third one here, there's lots of granulation. Alright, and then let's pull just our straight turquoise so we can see. So nice. This palette has so much potential to be like bright and open feeling. And then we get a little bit of earthiness from the Naples yellow, really nice. So there's those colors and it's really interesting. So we can see this is kind of a, a range we've got so far. And now we're going to push into more neutral colors by mixing that pyrrole red with transparent turquoise. So let's, we'll do that right below this one. And let's see, let's start with turquoise this time. Alright, let's see, we'll put that right here-ish, that looks good. Do, 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 do. Nice strip of turquoise, that looks good. And then we'll slowly start adding our red. Because the turquoise and red are close to being complementary colors because that red is so warm, it's close to orange, these two neutralize each other a lot. And what happens before this goes gray is this turquoise gets actually like more blue. It's really hard to see the color shift. I hope that you can see it on camera. It's hard to see. So we're pushing this these two are my favorite to mix together. And especially because they're so strong, you can get really, really dark tones. Let me show you a dark one. It's gonna be similar to the color I just made, just darker. So nice. 
but the, these colors are so strong that the way they poke through is so interesting. All right, let's push this a bit warmer. We're running out of room on this sheet. So I'm gonna push it a bit further. It looks nice. I'm almost out of room on this paper. So we are putting more red into the mix. Boop, 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 boop. All right, and then what we'll do is I'm just gonna scoot this one like that so we can push this further into the red. So we're going from one like super like high chroma color to another and they just neutralize like really cleanly in between. It does look a little bit, I will say it looks a little more like the yellows peek through a bit more on camera. Um, so it does, it can make the color look a little more brown than it is. Okay, so we've got a nice range here, and then let's just go for our straight red all by itself. So that's just the red. Okay, so those are just our three colors. This is so pretty. Let me show you. I'm going to back the camera up again. Back up, back up, backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then we will refocus. Let's see, where do you go like that? Look at these beautiful colors. Ooh, they look so nice. That's a little overexposed, huh? There we go. So these are like our base tones. So pretty. It's, it's kind of interesting when you see them like, in a line like this <laughs> um, because like this red and this red are the same color but this looks more orange because it's with these and this looks a bit closer to purple so interesting so this is what we have as like far as as far as like the base mixes for all of our colors yeah the um, it is a bit more of a muted rainbow because this turquoise is so green and the pyro red is so orange, so it's not like a perfect complementary thing. And then we've got a bit of earthiness from the Naples yellow. So they all kind of work together to tone down what would otherwise just be a, a rainbow, you know? Yeah, I think they look really nice together. I want to just do some like freeform swatches here and then we will move on to our color comps for the final piece. So another mix with these three colors that I really like is the sort of purpley hues that you can get from mixing all three of them together. So this isn't going to be purpley. This is just a gray, and then I just want to shift it 
like little bits at a time to see like some of the neutral colors we can get in of in varying like the values. Make sure to like mention me or tag me or at me if you have any specific questions so that I can see that more clearly and I will do my best to answer any questions that you all have. Thank you all so much for being here. This is fun. I always have to um, like work through a bit of nerves before a live stream but it's really, really fun to just sit down with you all. Ooh, this is nice, this sort of green color over here, I like that a lot. Oh, you miss seeing me live. Thank you. Yeah, I um it's it's weird with live streams. It's kind of a thing that I forget that I can do. And it does I have to be like socially prepared, like have the social energy to do. But I I always enjoy it and then it gives me time to work on other things on the days when I would have been like editing a video. So it's nice. It's nice that we can do this and it will be there to watch later. So this is like our color template. This, these are our lots and lots of colors that we can mix from these. So fun. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to, I wanna show you the reference image I'm working with today and how I'm turning that into our final painting and then we will go over some color comps together to decide where we want to put all the colors for the final painting. Okay, so I'm going to move my paints for a moment. Would you use all the gray variations in one painting? Yeah, they can each communicate distance. Yeah, so, so you can really you can do a lot with manipulating what is in the foreground, what is in the background based on how saturated things are. You can like direct the eye for focal points. It's really fun to use a lot of these variations. It's fun with, with a painting like this, you could almost go with really light layers of like, like very light um, in value, but higher in saturation. So you could do like a really pastel rainbowy thing, or you can neutralize a ton and then just have pops of color. So you can use these various gray variations and it really does seem so different from these pure mixes. So cool. Mm. Tips for practicing with jelly gouache. Oh boy, that's a that's a good question. Um, like yeah, when you're when you're working between like more opaque and and less opaque, I think it's really important to um, start with like I've talked about this before, but your first layers you want to be more transparent, like more water, because if you try to do that on later on later layers that are thicker, it'll just reactivate that paint underneath. And that can kind of be really messy. So work from thinner paint to thicker paint when you're layering things together. That's really helpful. Don't be afraid to try wet on wet stuff. That's really fun as well. I'm going to let me write this up. And mostly with the jelly gouache, it's one of those things that, you know, it's so much paint and relatively inexpensive that it's fun to just try lots of things and use lots of paint at once. So hopefully those little bits are helpful. So this is my final sketch. And 
you, you may recognize this person who we're going to be referencing today because I've painted him a lot of times. So this is the reference I'm working from, and I will zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit better, like that. Okay, so it's really interesting because I feel like when it's just a sketch, you can see the similarities a lot more between the reference image and the final sketch, so we can see a lot of the structural similarities. What are you doing? Where are you going? So I did want to take a second just to show you like how I break down these different pieces. Okay, so we're going to focus on this for a moment because I want to show you some structural things. So I just have this up in Procreate. This is my reference image. And when I'm building my like final image, the first thing that I do is usually to establish like my borders. So am I using the right brush? Let's we'll say that I am. It is Tamino. I have been loving his music and then discovered that he also does lots of modeling stuff. So okay, so as far as like how I'm going to be approaching this, I'm kind of setting this more as my composition. So we're cutting out the outer edges. Oh my goodness, 90s punk heartthrob. I hadn't even thought of that, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, so we'll do that. And then the next most important shape for me is this head shape. So this right here and where that gets placed within like the composition. And then I look at the connecting pieces to like the upper and lower sections. So after that, we've got like all of this hair up here, right? And, and I'm thinking about how that's gonna frame. I'm gonna have this going all the way up to the edges for myself. Oh, he's got a brother who's a model and music producer. Oh my goodness. Talented families. So then we'll move into like usually the next big shapes. Basically right now I'm just breaking this down into big shapes and shadows. You're so right. The shadows are really important. If, 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 if I'm working from a reference that doesn't have a lot of lighting dis distinction, so like my face is really well lit right now, there's not a lot of shadows, you know, because I'm, I'm, it's lit right from the front instead of from the side, that's actually harder to paint from because it's harder to see values a lot of times. You can do it, of course, but this gives, this stronger lighting situation is really helpful. So um, next I'm looking at like the eye sockets. You may recognize these colors if you saw the vlog that I accidentally made public yesterday. <laughs> those are those are the kinds of vlogs that I do mostly for Patreon, and um, that one, for whatever reason, my phone went. Oh, you want this to be public, right? So that was public when it shouldn't have been. That's okay. So after the eye socket. We've got our nose, and usually when I'm actually drawing, I do the head shape first, and then I put in the ear, and the ear tells me where to put the nose, and then I put in the eyes. So that's usually the order I go in. So yeah, we've got these shapes, and then I technically should have used this color. So for the mouth here, like got this shape going on. And I usually try to think a lot about where everything's going. So for me, I'm gonna be shifting the lighting a little bit and we're gonna be shadowing the forehead as well. So let, let me make a, a new layer to talk about values. And we're just gonna go in with like a standard round brush. Oh, my battery's low, that's okay, this won't take long. And let me set this to multiply. Okay, that'll work. Nice big brush. So as far as how I'm adjusting the lighting for this, I am going to be putting like this entire section in shadow here. So um, 
um, we're going to be, all this is in shadow, all this is in shadow, shadow under the nose, and the top lip mostly is going to be in shadow. And this is kind of the structure we're working with. And then I'm currently thinking about making this bottom section dark, but we will test that out in our color comps. And then kind of going from there, and then we'll build some depth in. Pretend this, basically don't ignore this light value because we're not doing that. So I'm going to be working with lots of shadow with some variation here, and I think that the area of the most um, contrast, like, will probably be in like the mouth and the nose, and then lots of shadowy colors in the eyes. So that's the plan. I need to plug my iPad back in, because if you have an iPad, you'll know that once it tells you it has a low battery, it's not like you can just casually go, okay, I'm, I'm sure I've got some time. It's like, no, you better plug that in right now, because that thing's about to die. Okay. So that's some of my thoughts on processing this reference. This is our final sketch, but before we start painting this, let's talk about colors. I already have one that I think is the color palette I'm going to do, but we're going to do a couple of tests first, just to make sure. So, so the difference between these, these are the first ones I painted. These are on mixed Canson XL mixed media paper, and these are on 100% um, cotton paper. I did my first test on this, but this paper is so thin that it buckled a ton, and for the purpose of this video, I thought it would be easier to have something that wasn't going to buckle as much. So we're going to work on these, and I'm not going to show you the one that I think I already know I'm going to use. We'll start with this one. So let's get this a little closer. I'd really like to set it up so that I can show you my palette and the reference. So let me see if I can do that. It is a cloudy day today, so we're getting varying amounts of sun. I'm going to do my best to not let it get too dark for you. Okay. And then I'll try to mix, like, in this corner. Oh, the switch? Yeah, the switch has, like, multiple warnings. It's like, hey, you're getting close, and hey, you're really getting close. Alright, so I have my reference image up on the side, and I want to do something different from what I was originally already thinking I was going to do. So these are going to be super loose. My goal with this is not to put a lot of detail into these, which is part of the reason why I don't usually do them on fancy paper. I mostly just want to think about the values I'm using and making sure all of that stuff works. And right now we're going to test out something other than what I was originally planning. It's too bright? Okay. Alright, that should be better. I love working with fewer colors because it's it's just such an easy way to focus on like building an effective painting instead of getting worried about having too many colors. And now I want to test making oops, just grabbed the wrong color. I want to test making the hair really dark which is more accurate to like the reference but is not what I was like originally planning. We're gonna try it, see how we feel. I feel like that's still kind of bright. Ooh. 
me know if that's too bright or if it looks okay. I don't usually stretch my paper. I do usually tape it down. So I have our final piece will be taped down with masking tape and then I just let that dry completely before removing it from the tape or removing the tape rather. It's going to be really important for this one that there's no white in the background. Mm, subjects I'd like to learn to paint, but that are intimidating. Um, I'd like to get better at landscapes because there are a lot of natural elements that I would like to incorporate into my work in the future. For the most part, I know that like what I do is generally pretty limited as far as like the range of things um, I paint, but I'm really happy with the work that I do at this point. I used to feel worse about it, like going, oh, well, I don't paint all these other things, and if I'm a good artist, I should. But mostly at this point, I'm pretty happy with what I do. But yeah, there are definitely some things that I want to expand upon that I think could just improve what I'm already doing and make make it more effective. So I'm, I'm just thinking about values, and I already did something I wasn't going to do, <laughs> which is I wanted to keep the top section cooler in this one. I'm just going to make a big mess. I do want the eyes to be really dark. That's like one of my favorite things to do. Okay, so my thought process with this color palette is having a cooler top half with dark hair and then into much warmer colors near the mouth. That's what's on my mind at the moment. I'm gonna be half I'm gonna have to be careful not to overdo the yellow. This paper is so nice. It's I know that I could do a lot to like define these values more, like really build structure on this, but that's like not the the purpose of this point. So it's hard for me to not push that too much. I do really like some of the lighter values in this though. In this like and then we could put more of that turquoise up here. Okay. We're going to step away from this idea for a moment so we can move on to the next one. Okay. So, instead of let's see. Instead of turquoise and then warmer at the bottom, we could try to push more greens and yellows into the skin tone and see how that looks, see how we like that. So focus more on the Naples yellow. I think yellows can do really nice things for like skin tones. So let's try, this is something I was thinking of, was trying almost like a yellow underpainting. So having like lots of yellow underneath and then building other colors onto it. So if we focused on just the yellow to start, let's just go like full yellow, yellow everywhere. This is definitely not something that I do very often, but the warmth could be really fun to play with. So this one, the technique would vary a little bit because it would require more layering or more intentional layering. I'm going to use my heat tool to dry this so it's going to make a little bit of noise and my heat tool is kind of melty over here. Um, but yeah, give me just a second to dry this. Okay, 
that's mostly dry. Hmm. Ooh, too anxious to actually paint. Do you mean just having like anxiety, but you're also trying to paint through it, or is painting itself making making you anxious? You know? Um like are you nervous to paint because you feel like it won't be good or are you trying to paint to like comfort anxiety but you're having trouble let me know which one you mean not to like put you on blast or anything obviously <laughs> okay so now this one's way warmer these colors you actually can't quite tell how red this is but the heat gun I I feel like I wouldn't be a watercolor artist if I didn't have a heat gun because I don't really like to wait for <laughs> paint to dry. Um, and some, a lot of artists just work that into their process. You know, like they'll work on stuff wet into wet when there's, when areas are wet. And then as things dry, they will work in those areas and they just kind of drift around the painting depending on what's dry. Oh, you're scared you're gonna ruin it, mm-hmm. Um, one of, this is actually a question that I, I get fairly often, and I think one of the most important things to consider is how you're picturing your art, like the final product that makes you afraid. So are you picturing sharing the art? Are you, like, are you imagining it on social media or and how other people react to it? Or is it just specifically an internal thing that's really only related to you? If, if it feels social, then maybe don't share it. <laughs> just, just because like the, that, that's just like one of the detriments of social media and the ways that it breaks us, um, which feels kind of unnecessary to me, you know. Um, I, I, I oftentimes have to take like month, like month long breaks at a time from social media because I just get too worried about social perception of my art. Um, otherwise, you have to make so much art that isn't quite what you want in order to get to the things that you do want. So, like, I'm, I'm in a place now where I'm so much happier with ha how I make art, but it, it took me years of going... I'm not really sure why these proportions are off. I just know that they are. And then having to just learn through and learn to solve those problems and figure out what it was, what I was doing that I didn't like. Sometimes it just takes time. But you have to let your make, basically what I'm trying to say is, you have to let your make, self make mistakes, but the mistakes are good because they help you learn. And like they provide like essential learning time. Like failing is good because you need to fail because you need to learn so this one is way 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 warmer and I'm actually not even entirely sure where to put my darkest tones in a composition like this um, I would like to play around with some hair shapes I think that could be fun like shapey shapes hmm <laughs> then maybe like more grays up top this one the lighting has changed for like this reference yes mistakes are very good because it helps you learn. Okay. This one, it's hard to see this one as a more finished thumbnail because the values are still so light. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Warm yourself up using cheap paper, cheap paint, and lower stakes. Yeah! That's a good point. Just get yourself painting. Like just, if, the, if there's a situation or a combination of materials that encourages you to just paint, do that. That's a really good piece of advice. Thank you. 
think I was going to put more greens into the skin tone and then I forgot on this one. That's another thing we could play with, but I feel like I've done that kind of recently is like greens and like the phthalo blue more in the skin. Okay. Oof. Oh man, I thought I had a favorite, but now I'm having a shift that I wasn't expecting. Okay, we're gonna pause with these and back up and look at them all together, the three we've done so far. I'm gonna do my best to keep this not too overly bright. Okay, so these are the two I just did. I really like this one. So I like the cooler tones in this one. I like these grays. I like the um, darkness of like the hair into the darkness of the eyes and then have a, like, a lighter area down here. I'm actually a big fan of that. I like these warmer tones down at the bottom. This one has just more of like a classic, like tragic, statuesque painting, you know, um, where it's like kind of sad, but it also feels warm in a way, which is very interesting, I think. So now I'll show you the one that I did first that I actually thought, okay, this is going to be the one, which is this one. Now this one I did on my mixed media paper, so it buckled a ton and did not layer as well. So these are the three that I'd done. This one I have a lot more purple tones here and it gives me, it feels like Castlevania-y, like it reminds me of Castlevania, just this color palette. Um, so I really like, oh man. Right, it def this one definitely doesn't convey the moodiness of the reference and I think that could be a really interesting eerie thing to contrast to have colors that don't match the moodiness but I could save this sort of yellow earthy underpainting for a concept that fits better I think so I'm gonna set this one aside for now and think about these two it's really tricky yeah I do really like and this one, one thing I, I do like about this one is there's more of that like pyrrole red just as it is in that one. So when we're looking at these two, yeah, <laughs> Castlevania. So if we look at these two side by side, I'm going to make sure this is all in focus and everything's good. Um, it's hard to choose between them. And I don't want the fact that this is on cheaper paper to be like the reason that I like this one better, but it could be fun to take some of these colors that I really like from here and to put them into the nose area here because I did want to go from warm to cool on this one. Yeah, the yellow one does have like an ethereal feeling to it. I agree. Mm hmm. more dusty and soft. I agree. The dusty softness is something that I want. I'm, I was a bit unsure on this one about the color that I wanted for the hair, you know? So it's hard. It's going to, this one's going to be harder for me to balance the values in the hair. I think it'll be helpful to make the, now this one also, this paper was fighting me as far as making dark values. There's like four layers of paint on here. Um, Oh, this is tricky. I think we're going to go with this one. I do I love the, these colors so much. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like more red in here, but I really like the darkness in here. So maybe we can just combine those two, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so tricky. Okay, we could go dark for the hair. We can pull in some of the value things that I like over here. And then some of the color things that I like over here. I think we can come pull this together with a kind of a combination of both of these. I feel like it would be really helpful to do another color comp, but I don't have any more printed on this nice paper. So I think we're just gonna wing it. Yeah, so we're gonna, f okay, ooh, flipping the darkness. It's hard, dark hair or dark background. This one really wants a dark background, but then you, I feel like I couldn't make the hair dark as well. All right, okay, we're gonna, we're going for it. We're going for it, it's time. It's time, it's time to go for it. All right, final sketch. I am going to use my, yeah, I really like the darker values on top going against the eyes. That's like an essential thing for me and I think we can still pull that off. I think we can still pull that off, <laughs> making some color shifts. All right, so I'm going to lighten up my sketch Dark hair, dark hair, dark hair. No, darker background. <laughs> dark hair and light background. Uh, okay. All right. We can start with a wash and go from there. Okay. Yeah. I, I have to make a decision, you know? But the fun thing is, is because I kind of scanned this, I will have different iterations to like that will be available so another thing to keep an eye out for to watch out for is I will be making all three of these little original these little color comps the three that we did these three will all be up on my shop for sale these small originals after the live stream so if you're interested in picking up a small inexpensive original for me and something like a little piece of the live stream, I will make those available. This original, as long as I don't completely butcher it, <laughs> will be available for sale as well. And hopefully there will be prints of this one up on, um, on the website as well. Yeah, the contrast between the background and the eyes is a really important thing. So I'm using my kneaded eraser to lighten this. And the reason I'm using a kneaded eraser instead of a regular eraser, you may already know this if you're familiar with how uh, temperamental watercolor paper can be is I don't want to scrub at this paper because that would just kind of wreck it yeah chat polls oh my goodness I have put together polls sometimes but I don't think YouTube has like a integrated feature for polls maybe they do like in the iCard but I've, I've seen that for like published videos I don't know if you can do that for live stuff oh yeah okay it's time i'm so nervous because i didn't expect to like both of the other ones so much i may reposition myself so that you can see the painting better so give me a moment to set up a nice frame for you the yellow clump i know i love that one i really like the yellow one we're not going to abandon it um, I the more I look at it the more I love it but I will save this for a future painting I love it so much ooh Witcher 3 I wish I could I wish I want so badly to fall in love with that game I really do alright I am setting up Oh, 
Oh, they removed the ones in the card for poles? That's kind of silly. All right, so I'm gonna need a bigger brush. Something that we can make like looser washes with. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Is that the right one? All right. I have brushes. So I grabbed a lot of my silver black belt, black velvet brushes because I really like them. So yeah, you guys are so nice to each other. I appreciate that. And then this one big fluffy brush I really enjoy. But I was thinking about going in with this large flat brush first to cover some areas and create some nice like, geometric shapes. Let me move myself. Nope, that's not me. I'm gonna move myself down here. Ooh so that you can see my mixing area and the painting. Oh, thank you, Estelle. That's very sweet. I'm gonna, I need a, I need a clean slate to think on. So I'm going to clean these two wells. I usually only work in like the first two wells and then I use the other two for like super saturated single colors, like if I'm not going to mix as much and I just need a smaller area. Okay, so we've got mostly clean work surface. <gasps> I'm so nervous. Okay. All right, I've got my color things here, my color comps. We're going to do warmer colors up top. Okay, we'll start with the things that we know which is we need a warm color for the top area. It's, it's a good idea. You know what? Okay, we're gonna add more red. It's a good idea to work more with like pure colors at first and then build desaturation on top of them because it's harder to go the other way sometimes. All right. Everything look good? All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. First strokes, big strokes, covering areas. Uh-huh, we're going for it. Okay. You could push some warmth into the bottom of the hair. Hmm. Okay. We're already at a point where I have to make decisions. I don't think that having the hair be completely white would be super beneficial. I want to knock that back a bit. And then. We'll do this. It's this is the like one of my favorite things about limited palette things is having to make decisions, like having limited colors to make decisions with, and then just going yep. I just have to do something. I just have to make a decision and make it happen. Gets to the point where you're like yep. I just can't wait anymore. It's time and gotta use my colors. Okay. Put that there and we're off and we're started we're going I'm just knocking back the white up top yeah especially on a fresh plastic palette the colors beat up so much this palette I've been using enough that it pools better yeah so you can either scrub it ahead of time or like the more you use it, the better it will behave. Are you INFJ? <laughs> I am, that's funny that you just like guessed it. Yeah, I am. 
personality type. Okay, we got our first wash. I, okay. I feel like I have to make a decision about where I want there to be darkness because I'm I really like the lightness here and the darkness here but I also really like the darkness here but I can't do both but I don't really want the hair to be super light because I want there to be a darkness overall that mixes the eyes and the hair so I am gonna make that I'm gonna make the hair dark I'm doing it I'm making the hair dark Okay. Yep, we're making the hair dark. We're just gonna we're gonna kind of combine our two color palette ideas. Wowee, does that look saturated? So this is kind of pulling from this one a bit, but oh, I got really bright. Sorry. Um, sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna need a neutral color. Neutral, neutral. And then we'll push this darkness. This paper is still pretty wet, so I have to know that anything I put down now is going to bleed a bit. So I'm thinking about that. All of this will get layered on top. Of, like there will be layers on top of these so but this side's a bit more dry I'm trying to be careful I feel like you could do a limited palette video with just the turquoise and the scarlet. It would be similar to like the very first one I did. It looks so dusty and cloudy now in the painting. I'm soon going to have to dry this layer before I keep adding more just so that my colors will actually sit. You know? Yeah, I really wanted a strong pop of teal and then when we layer on top of it, it'll still be, you know, very present. The color I have on my brush right now is a bit more brown because I added some yellow. So I'm just sneaking in bits of that into this first wash. I don't like this line. But maybe we could. Okay. I'm going to knock this back. Oh, this is gonna be fun. So take a look at it now, and then we are going to re-examine it when it's dry, because these colors will shift. They will get a bit lighter when they dry. So let's dry it, and then we can move on to our next layer.
Okay, so this is like so like I it was so wet that it's still it's not completely dry yet. It's actually still buckling a bit, but I don't want to just run my dryer forever. A um, couple of questions that you had. Let's see. Do you stick with a certain amount of layers? Oh, sorry, there's beeping outside. We're getting a delivery. Can you hear the beeping? Anyway, um, no, I don't stick with, with a specific number of layers. It's just as many as it takes. Usually at least three and upwards of more. <laughs> more. <laughs> um, all of these paints are Roman Schmal watercolors. That teal is is transparent turquoise, I believe, is the, is the color. So I think we need a little bit more light. Okay. Yeah, I like the cloudiness, so we're going to see how much of that we can maintain. I'm going to switch to a small brush now and focus on an area that I know I want to be more detailed. So right now I'm going to start defining the nose shape a bit with like some gentle warm layers. J1 is going to class. Thank you for coming. Hope class goes well. <laughs> I'm talking so loud outside. <laughs> I'm excited about this. I want to feature the red color um, yeah I really want to focus feature the red color in the nose area so we'll slowly build that up. I had the thought of making the mouth very dark which I'm kind of scared to do now uh-huh, yep, that moody PA weather. Yep, we're in Pennsylvania, and it's like yesterday was really cold, and today it's like so much warmer. It's getting up to like 60 degrees Fahrenheit today. I think it went down to like 58, but yeah, today's gonna be so much warmer. It's crazy. Thanks to you, I've fallen in love with unnatural skin tones. That's so sweet. Yeah, I definitely feel that. I love just doing really different things with skin. It's like my favorite thing. Which I've talked about this before, but it actually stemmed originally from my like inability to mix natural skin tones. Like I Maybe I always wanted to do something a bit unnatural with skin tones, but originally I was just like, wow, I'm just having a hard time getting natural skin tones. And then it kind of developed into a technique that I actually really enjoyed. Um, so now I just, I'm able to embrace it more as a thing that I do. This is gonna be really fun. I'm really excited about this one. It's interesting because like it's not until you can like sit down with what will be more of the final piece that you can start to see like the individual elements come together. I'm really pumped about this one. I also want to think about the things that I don't want to get rid of. So this is a common, common 
issue that I have, which is like there will be some really soft, delicate things that are happening right now that I love and I would be really sad if they went away. And then I like kind of forget about them as I'm working on the painting and then they're gone. So I'm going to try to hold on to those this time around. Let's see, how are we doing? Mm -hmm. Alright, so we've got some really light stuff. I want to add more darkness, but I don't want to disrupt what we have. I like, I'm a big fan of the light stuff that's happening down here. So I'm going to push that a little more. More turquoise for the hair. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get up there. I want to slowly ease into the darker hair values. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. How's that look? Is that good? Like the brightness is good and everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the heat gun, sometimes when, especially when I do big washes, it takes so long to dry with the heat gun, and I don't want the whole live stream to just be this thing running. Let's add another layer to the nose because I do, I, I need to like, I need a place of solid structure to go like, ah, oh, that looks the way I want it to look now so that I know how much work to put into the other areas. So the nose is going to get a bit more structured. The painting already feels so, like right now anyway, it feels way different than I thought. It feels so soft and like melty and uh, I'm gonna have to decide like whether or not I want to give that up to get like what was actually originally my goal for the painting, you know? This is fun. I like seeing this shape like slowly emerge. That's good. I do, I will have to push like the moodiness of the upper area. So we will, we'll be able to look at that and then, you know, see what we want. Does paint ever bleed through your tape? Sometimes. Um, it varies, like the quality of the tape can make a big difference for that too. I'm actually kind of sad because I really like the tape I have um, and I've been working through like a backlog of it, 
but I haven't been able to find more of it. Like I think they're not, maybe not making it anymore and I've been using this tape for years. So it's gonna be sad if I have to find a new tape. If you have any recommendations for like brands of masking tape that you like, let me know. Um, now that I am more familiar with using a heat tool, I think that it doesn't quite matter as much. But I'm just, I want to keep some of these greens in, so I'm just adding a bit more green. All right. I think it is time to push the moodiness of the top. Yeah, it's it's hard because I really like some of this looseness and cloudiness and the more structure I add to the upper section of paint of the painting, the more we start to lose that. But I think we can see some we'll see something different and special emerge. So, okay. This is a big step because I'm about to add some structure to the eyes. I'm scared. <laughs> okay. All right, we're doing it. These don't have to be the final strokes, but... Woo! I know it looks scary right now, but these this whole shape is gonna kind of become one big shape, so we're going up into that area. What in the world? What color was I mixing? Okay. All right, let's push the warmth in here. about this. Hold on. Oh yeah, the tape comes the tape comes off like while you're painting because it gets wet. Hmm. I feel like that could be because of the kind of tape you're using or because of the kind of paper you're using. I'm not sure if anybody else has any information. It does happen to me when I use like a tape that ultimately doesn't work for me. So it could be a tape problem. I'm just, I was gonna go into the other eye next, but I've got this color that I wanna drag around. I've heard a lot of good things about washi tape, like from people using washi tape for paintings. I haven't tried it much myself, but I've heard good things. having a lot of fun with this, like pulling out my values and stuff. Oh, never had issues with washi tape. That's great. I'll have to give it a try soon. I do have washi tape. Um, so that could be a fun thing to try using. All right. 
I need to find the shape of this eye again. I know I'm, I'm not super concerned with the detail in the eyes. I, I want them to kind of melt. build some more shapes into the hair. So I'm going to pull in that teal some more. The shape language of the hair is so important. Like I often end up with shapes that feel too curvy in the end. So I'm going to try not to do that here. It's just kind of a natural thing that happens. I don't want to I don't really want to lose the haziness. There's a lot of saturated red in there. I'm focusing mostly on the like the shadow shapes of the hair when I'm doing this, like as far as where I'm where I'm placing everything. I'm thinking about those shadowy shapes. I don't want to cover up this turquoise too much. I really like it. I'm really liking how this is going. This is really fun. And then it gets harder to know what to do as we get further up. Because the most important part is is getting these shadows down here. So, so that's that's gonna structure the whole thing, I think. Like that. Does that look okay? Does it look too bright? Maybe now to keep it lighter, I can, hmm, we can go in with just like the sort of fading of turquoise up at the top of the hair. To get like some more form and, and the shadowy shapes, but not, nothing too crazy. Just a little bit of structure. He looks so fluffy headed. That was not my original intention, but I do really like it. one of those points where the painting could be like 80% done at this point. Um, but all right. 
I don't think that the nose needs too much more. Um, Colleen asked if I still use the original photo reference. Yes, I'm, I'm looking at the reference, the whole painting process. I, I need to be able to see it for the structure and like for my values. I used to not, I used to only have my reference up for the sketching but then I didn't have a guide like for my values and for like actually building the structure so I yeah I do always have the reference up I don't want the mouth to get too dark I do need more of that sort of dusty color if we're gonna push if we're gonna push our Castlevania vibes. So I'm gonna build a little bit more structure in down here. So I have to be careful. I can feel it's like reactivating my layers here. I'm glad the hair looks like it's glowing. That's kind of what happens when you layer a color over itself in a light wash. So giving this soft edge, but also having just like turquoise on turquoise in light washes, high saturation works that way, nice. Hmm. I don't want too much of the V shape in the chin. A bit of yellow underneath the eyes. That could actually be nice. Okay, I'm putting that on the list. Right now I'm just adding a bit more structure here. Okay, 
let's do something with our Naples yellow. I'm mixing it with a red. Oh, hold on, I got too much other color in that. Okay, let's see, what do we want to do? We've got a nice warm color on the brush. Yeah, look at that. That's nice. The yellow on the purple is really pretty. I'm actually going to pull that mix with a little bit more turquoise down here. I'm scared, but I think I want to knock back some more white. We're getting a little overexposed here. Let me know if that's okay. Maybe yeah, I'm just mixing up something neutral to lightly glaze in here. Looks good. Still feels a bit overexposed. That should be okay. Hmm. I don't want to do too much more here, actually. So I need to just make some decisions about how I want to wrap this up. Sorry, my nose is like super itchy. I'm getting over a cold. Oof. Just got hit with like an itchy nose and like my eyes are all itchy. Oof, watery. Oof. Just came out of nowhere. go okay gotta decide if I feel like anything in particular is missing can you see this tear running down my eye from like watery eyeballs okay let's think here Hmm. 
Aw, oh, thank you, Chris. I don't want the eyes to have too much definition, but I want to make sure that any other areas that are higher contrast, they look good and it makes sense to have that as like a focal point. So I'm putting more contrast in down here. Like that. Yay, I'm so glad that you like it. Thank you. We are almost done with this one, I think. Oh yeah, the part of the mouth that looks out of focus. Thank you. I almost like pulled that more into focus, but I'm really glad I didn't. Right now I'm just just defining this shape a little bit more. Not too much because I do want it to be lighter. So soften that. Okay. I'm debating whether or not I want to do one more layer. Um, I'm debating whether or not I want to do one more layer on the eyes, but I really like how indistinct they are, how they just kind of disappear. Do we think we have enough of the like darker value? I feel like the background's not doing much. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry you had a bad day at work. Eyes, yes. Yeah, we can do a little darker. I do want them to not be like that important, the eyes. But we can do a little bit more. I am going to pull a bit more of a neutral structure out here. It looks really groovy. You know what? I agree. It does feel a bit groovy, doesn't it? Let me know if you have any ideas for what we should name this painting. Speaking of groovy things, if you're like, this painting really looks like a... Whoa. I really like short painting names. So, like a couple of words, like one or two words, generally. Just adding a bit of structure. Okay, let me dry this and then I can see it more clearly. name the painting <laughs> oh that's funny okay Adonis and Dionysus are such good names and groovy 
Yeah, Dionysus is such a good name. That's It's going to be hard to not pick that one. That's a really good idea. Who said that? Chris. Thank you, Chris. That's a really good idea. I'm going to add one more layer to this area. I want this to stay super soft down here. But when it dries, it does fade, so... Will he get a neck? No. He does not get one. Groovy 90s punk heartthrob. Right. Ooh, heartthrob by itself. <gasps> Ooh, that's good too. Oh, this is so hard. You guys have really good ideas. No neck for you. Okay. I think I want a little bit more, just a tiny bit more in the eyes. I originally thought I was going to make that whole area really dark, and then it didn't end up going that way, which is fine. <laughs> no neck. No rights. Okay. Let's do a, oh, I just stuck my wrist in wet paint. I better dry that. All right, we're gonna do a little bit more in the eyes. So let me bring you in, there we go. Just a little bit to put in some shapes that kind of don't exist yet. And I know that this will dry even lighter, like you can already see this, this corner like disappearing. So we're going super light. Also not a lot of like saturation variation. That's important. And I know that looks um, kind of dark on camera, but it's not that dark. This is just gonna like fade in and disappear. Something just made me think of a musical, and now like songs from the musical are stuck in my head. Okay. This is gonna lighten a lot. Alright, let me dry this so we can get an honest look at what this looks like dry.
let's see. And then. Does that look okay? Tired Ted is a vibe. He does look so tired. I feel like what could be fun is if I go with, oh, that's too bright. If I go with a name that feels like more, um, I don't know, artsy for the final painting. And then when I list the little color comps, they can have silly names like Tired Ted. I think that could be really fun. I'm just adding some light. These might even just disappear when they're dry, but... Okay. Trying to decide if it needs anything else. Ted writes. Right. It's like the these this one has way more Ted vibes than any of our color comps. But mm -hmm. wow. So it's funny because I feel like we technically pulled more like we technically pulled more this one you know but I did still keep some of those ready tones that I liked from this one as well as the blue or chin so not full this one a little bit more on this side um, do we need anything else anything at all I feel like okay it's funny that somebody just said Keanu because that's what I was thinking when people started saying Ted I immediately was like Keanu but you can't do that you can't Keanu is too Keanu you can't you can't name the painting Keanu we can just pretend that like the like the painting has a name but like this guy's name is Keanu this is a painting a portrait, a photograph of Keanu. Aww, Chris, that's so sweet. Chris says, I revived their love of art. What did you say, love of art? Interest in art. Aww. Thank you. Okay. Just a little bit more definition on the jaw so it stands out from the background. Just a little bit. More. Okay, like that. Yeah, we'll just name the painting Keanu's cousin. <laughs> okay. I think I just need to decide if I will want or need anything else for the background. Maybe a couple more strokes. The jawline is adding years to your life. Aw. Yeah. His oh my gosh, Jasper. <laughs> His IRL name is Ted, but he works as a Dionysus cosplayer for parties. That's like, that's gotta be like canon now to be like, this is Ted, but he cosplays as Dionysus. I, I approve of this plan. Let's pull something in. These are gonna help to just draw the focus in to the face, but I don't want it to tilt too strong this way. Oh, 
Oh, thank you, good neighbor. Okay, let me dry this. We'll add one more stroke across the bottom. are great okay we need a little bit more at the very very bottom just I like these strokes like these layered strokes down here it's really hard this brush this brush is so juicy that it's hard to keep the saturation up because it just holds so much water like that yeah mm-hmm sunshine Ted for the yellow one uh, right we just need variations of Ted right so like if this one's sunshine Ted what do we call the other ones let me know so like if this is sunshine Ted what do we call these two right I want to know. Vampire Ted for the far left. Which one was on the left? Like Castlevania, right? Like Vampire Ted, cause I, cause I was thinking Castlevania. I like that. Moody '90s heartthrob Ted. Somebody has to be Moody '90s heartthrob Ted. But I feel like we abolished him. Like, yeah, yeah. Making friends, make friends. I should make. That's it. That's the end of the make friends song. That's all I've got. He's genuinely hung over his heck. Yeah. It looks like he's just really good at like doing this, but yeah. I feel like we do need a moody 90s heartthrob Ted. Right? Oh, moody 90s punk heartthrob Ted? Moody 90s punk. Punk moody 90s? What's the like combination of those words? I feel like we need at least 90s and heartthrob and punk have to be in there. So real quick, I'm going to pencil this one in. So this one, this is Vampire Ted. I'm going to write that on the back. This is Vampire Ted, officially. I'm going to sign it. Okay, Vampire Ted, okay, done. And this is Sunshine Ted. And this is What was it? I just saw it. Moody 90s punk heartthrob. Moody 90s punk heartthrob. Party, I'm not feeling it, Ted. <laughs> 
old aim screen names oh my gosh yes i love that okay moody 90s punk i'm putting it on it's going on right now moody 90s punk heart throb does that have two t's It better have two T's. Ted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So all of our Ted's are named. Yeah. All of our Ted's are named. I really like the name Dionysus and then just having like the underlying canon of like he's cause he's he's Ted but he's cosplaying as Dionysus. That name, that, that, that name just, oh, I love that so much. Okay, all of our Ted's are done. These little originals will go up on my shop. And then Big Ted, <laughs> Big Ted gives a totally different vibe. I need to sign this real quick. So let me sign it and then we will be done. This has been like the most fun live stream, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Just name it after you guys. <laughs> That's funny. Oh yeah, they're Ted forever now, okay. So I'm just mixing up a neutral-ish color to sign this with. Okay, okay, no pressure. No pressure, just you just shine, you just sign it. You just sign the paintings. You just go, oh yeah. That went the way it went. You go like that. Ta da! Signed it. Okay. I am going to do I feel like we have to peel the tape together. So I'm gonna dry this one more time. Then we will peel the tape. If you wanna see like pictures of this when it's all done, I will post those on Instagram. There will be prints available. The original's gonna go up for sale. Um, Ted's gonna find a new home. And if somebody who didn't watch the live stream buys this, they'll never know that his name is actually Ted. Okay, hold on, I'm going to dry this. So I just heated this side of the tape because when the tape is warmer, it feels better. Nice. Peel this one. Secret Ted. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, I will post on Instagram in my stories as soon as these are listed with their names. So, um,. If you want any of them, they'll be there. Ooh, barista Ted, tired of taking Starbucks orders. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Yeah. So like he cosplays for for parties as Dionysus, but like his normal day job is just he's like an overworked Starbucks employee. <gasps> oh 
Vampire Ted spends his own life hiding from Sunshine Ted. <sighs> Multiverse Ted's? Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Sticker Ted? <laughs> oh man. Like, uh, what if I did like a limited run? of like a Ted, like a Ted sticker set. That was like, they could just be like rectangular stickers, right? And like, just have the three Ted's, just rectangles, maybe rounded rectangles. Sticker Ted's. Oh yeah, they're all Ted variants. <laughs> Okay, let's look at what, let's uh, examine the damage that we've done today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we've got Dionysus, who's definitely not just Ted cosplaying as somebody cooler than he actually is. The Ted series. We've got Moody 90s punk heartthrob Ted. Vampire Ted and Sunshine Ted. Yeah, stickers will take a little while because I, I, I outsource my stickers now, so I have to order them. But as soon as the Ted sticker set arrives, yeah, I'm gonna, I will do that. Might be a limited run, we'll see how it goes. If people really like it, I'll keep them in stock. It's been a while since I've had new stickers, so there will be a Ted series. Um, We'll, we'll, I will make that happen. That sounds really fun. Okay, we've got all of our Ted's. This was originally supposed to be just like a limited palette video and just turned into like the Ted origin story, Ted cinematic universe movie number one into the Tedverse. Yeah, so we started here. <laughs> this was like our origin point. And if you look at just these two things together, it pretty much feels like a normal limited palette video. Like, oh, look at that, we did it. We used a limited, um, we, we used a limited palette and then you just have all the Ted variants. Oh, I'm so happy with this, you guys. Thank you so much, this has been so much fun. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Ted, I will have to sketch Ted at least a few times, like what he looks like if he was like a whole person. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we did today. The TCU, yeah. <laughs> this has been a long stream. I think this is one of the longest streams I've done. Okay, I, if you, if anybody, listen, this is important. Okay, listen, listen, this is so important right now. If anybody draws Ted, you have to tag me. You have to, because I need to, I need to see that. Because yes i need to see ted if you if you do that please please okay there is no body ted full body starbucks uniform yep please 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 tag me if you draw if you draw ted okay i think i need to go <laughs> i i'm having so much fun just sitting and talking with you all now um this is great. I will get to work. I'm gonna scan all of these in. I'm going to list the originals. Um, I'm gonna make a th like a final thumbnail that will fool people into thinking this is a regular limited palette video. And um, Ted is a hydra with nobody. Right, he just, oh no, oh no. Ted's like super saiyan form is just all of them all of the multiverse Ted's like together in one like amalgamation of Ted talk oh my gosh I have to go because you guys are it's just too much <laughs> uh, Keanu like quinoa but like with a Q okay I'm going I'm going for real you guys are amazing you guys are great I wish we could talk about Ted some more 
maybe in the comments of like the post, like the Instagram post, we can talk about Ted some more on Instagram. Or in the comments of this video, we can talk about Ted some more. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. This has been the best live stream. I've had so much fun. I'm gonna go get to work on all of this and I will talk to you. I will talk to you next time. You guys are great. I'm waving to you here. I'm waving to you over here. Okay. This is so fun. Bye guys. Bye bye. The stream will be live soon, like on the channel. You can watch it. Okay. Okay. Bye. How do I close it? How do I make you go away? Okay. <laughs> bye.